Last week, the international community saluted the courage, the resilience, the strength, an incredible will to win of the Ukrainian people after nine years of Russia's military aggression against Ukraine that started on February 20th, 2014, when Russia's uh, soldiers in unmarked green army uniforms, also known as the little green men, invaded Crimea, as well as one year of Russia's all-out war against Ukraine that began on February 24, 2022. And according to the Kremlin and several Western pseudo-experts, was supposed to uh, last about three days. On April 12, 2022, the President of the United States, Joe Biden, qualified the atrocities that Russia was committing during this all-out war against Ukraine as genocide. And he later explained that I called it genocide because it's become clearer and clearer that Putin is just trying to wipe out even the idea of being Ukrainian. Two weeks later, on April 27, the House of Commons of Canada unanimously adopted a motion recognizing that the Russian Federation is committing a genocide, acts of genocide against the Ukrainian people. Several other countries, including the Czech Republic, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, and the Republic of Ireland have also recognized this 2022 genocide against Ukraine by acts of their parliaments. For the record, this modern day genocide started on the 90th anniversary of another genocide committed by Russia against Ukraine, namely the Holodomor, when the Kremlin starved millions of Ukrainians to death. On December 9, 1948, the General Assembly of the United Nations adopted the Genocide Convention. And since then, 152 countries, including Germany, have ratified it and undertook under that convention, and I quote, to prevent and to punish genocide. During the past year, Many of those countries, including Germany, have indeed helped Ukraine defend its territorial integrity. But as a retired U.S. general has recently indicated on CNN, the response of the United States to Ukraine's urgent appeals for the supply of weapons to help it defend itself has been no, 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 yes. Germany followed the same pattern, if not worse. The main reason for such procrastination and wavering by NATO member countries is that their predisposition to support Ukraine has been overshadowed by their desperate efforts not to escalate the war beyond Ukraine's borders. This short-sighted approach ignores the fact that on February 22nd, 2022, two days before the all-out war against Ukraine, Putin stated publicly that a special military operation would be launched against Ukraine to address his obsessive perception that the US and NATO will otherwise conduct a preemptive strike on Russia's missile systems with Ukraine serving as a foothold for such a strike. This was a very clear message that Putin perceives the US and NATO as imminent threats and that Russia will go 
beyond Ukraine's borders if Ukraine cannot secure them. Moreover, in his State of the Nation address on February 21, 2023, Putin even blamed the West for having started Russia's all-out war against Ukraine, adding that Russia is using force to stop it, which is additional evidence that Russia will use disinformation to blame the West and intensify Russia's already existent hybrid aggression against NATO member countries. If anyone thinks that this is an exaggeration of Russia's insatiable imperialist appetite, I wish to remind you that on March 4, 2022, the Russian military shelled Europe's largest nuclear power plant situated in Zaporizhia. And according to Ukraine's authorities, the result could have been an environmental disaster 10 times worse than the 1986 explosion at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. At the UN Security Council emergency meeting that day, the US Ambassador Linda Thomas Greenfield stated the following, I applaud the ability of the Ukrainian operators to keep all six reactors in safe condition while under attack. Russia's attack was incredibly reckless and dangerous, and it threatened safety of civilians across Russia, Ukraine, and Europe. In that sense, during this past year, Ukraine has not only defended its territorial integrity, but also defended Europe against Russia's military aggression, since, as you know, Radiation does not need a Schengen visa to travel from Ukraine throughout the European Union. Sadly, notwithstanding all of this, NATO member countries were constantly wavering and hesitating in the delivery of the necessary weapons to help Ukraine defend itself, namely by imposing a no-fly zone. And these inexplicable and unjustified delays have been fully exploited by Russia in causing tremendous human suffering in Ukraine and enormous destruction of its cities and villages. Indeed, Russia took full advantage of the initial unwillingness of NATO member countries to send weapons to help Ukraine secure a no-fly zone by firing over 4,700 missiles at Ukraine, with 97% of such attacks being on civilian infrastructure, including on energy and power infrastructure at the beginning of winter, thereby weaponizing winter cold weather and darkness against the Ukrainian population. On January 3 of this year, Ukraine's Prime Minister, Denis Shmihal, stated during a government session that the damages caused by Russia's all-out war against Ukraine already surpass the daunting amount of US $700 billion. Russia's attacks on civilian infrastructure caused a humanitarian crisis with 5 million Ukrainians being forced to leave Ukraine to seek refuge elsewhere, including Germany, and over 8 million internally displaced Ukrainians. In addition, more than 1 million Ukrainian citizens, including thousands of children, have been deported forcibly by Russia to Russian territories from the areas that Russia currently occupies, 
in Ukraine, which is an act of genocide in itself. Amazingly, notwithstanding these numerous and repeated genocidal acts against Ukraine, the determination of the Ukrainian people to defend their country has only strengthened and their conviction that Ukraine will restore its internationally recognized 1991 borders has intensified. Indeed, Ukraine's population fully supports Ukraine's armed forces and believes in a Ukrainian victory in 2023 and NATO member countries should do the same for their own best interest. Ukraine has already proven wrong the Kremlin's initial prediction of a three-day war to conquer Ukraine. Ukraine has done it again by wrecking Russia's plans to conquer the Donbass by Russia's so-called victory day on May 9, 2022. And Ukraine has even prevented Russia to claim Bakhmut as a victory by the first anniversary of Russia's all-out war against Ukraine. Despite the fact that Russia's officials and Russia's official and unofficial army have committed just about every imaginable war crime during its all-out war against Ukraine by resorting to torture, rape, killing and injuring civilians, including innocent children. Ukraine's armed forces have now liberated over 40% of Ukraine's territories that were temporarily and illegally occupied by Russia. And Ukraine strongly believes that it can win this war in 2023 with genuine support of the West. NATO member countries can either help Ukraine attain this goal or continue supplying Ukraine with weapons in the same fashion as in 2022, namely with respond a response to Ukraine's urgent calls for such weapons by taking the approach of no, 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 yes, without any joint strategic plan on how to end quickly Russia's genocidal war against Ukraine. Hopefully, NATO member countries will muster a joint political will to ensure Ukraine's victory in 2023 and then act accordingly as it is the only way to ultimately restore peace, security, and stability in the world, which is in the best interest of all NATO member countries, including Germany. On February 20th of this year, the President of the United States, Joe Biden, made a historic trip to the capital of Ukraine, where he declared to the world that after one year of Russia's all-out war against Ukraine, Kyiv stands and Ukraine stands. Democracy stands. The Americans stand with you and the world stands with you. These powerful words now need to be followed by concrete action. That is the only way for us 
to ensure that we put an end to this genocidal war, to the tremendous suffering of numerous Ukrainians, including children, that we will stop the devastation of Ukraine and that we will restore peace, security, and stability in Europe and in the world. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> I, I have a question to, um, to the keynote speakers, but then I'd like to suggest that if you have any questions, please go ahead. Um, just short question of mine, and then and then you, if you want to. Um, my question would be uh, to Mr. Pilisny. Um, okay. Okay. We lost him. Uh, okay. Uh, sorry. Then, then uh, probably to okay. Then to Mr. Choli, the question would be. Um, I mean, there is um, there is. We will heard today in a, on the main panel that um, there are around 90 tanks which are going to go to Ukraine, and it's like too too little. The reality is not the uh, optimistic that Ukraine will win the war. It's rather than um, it looks like uh, Ukraine is not going to to lose, but but it doesn't seem like like there should be some compromise or something uh, at the moment it looks really pessimistic as i as i got it so the question would be um is it fear in the western society in the, the western politics or is it like misunderstanding is it something that uh, in, that lies in human nature that i mean poland and baltic states they seem to understand which kind of danger we are dealing with but um the, 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 to the Western or that, um, at the moment, um, my feeling says that there, that there is too little on weapon that we that we get. Uh, do you have the same feeling? Can you can you um, support this um, statement? I see uh, that Pan Yuri is back. Do you want Pan Yuri to start and then for me to continue, or how do you want to proceed, Stefan? if um i didn't hear the question sorry um, okay so okay. my answer is very simple that's what i tried stefan to say during my presentation namely that uh, i think that the western approach has been throughout 2022 to support ukraine while at the same time to try to somehow avoid an escalation beyond Ukraine's borders. What the West does not realize is that Russia's military aggression is already going beyond Ukraine's borders. What the West does not realize fully is that if Ukraine should not be able to secure its borders, that Russia will definitely proceed further and try to conquer additional NATO member countries. And we, the only thing that stands between a third world war and peace, security, and stability is Ukraine's ability to secure its borders. And that why, that's why it's not just a question of helping Ukraine. It's a question of trying to ensure peace, security, and stability in the world, which is in the best interests of all countries. And war, as you know, is won not by haphazard decisions. There needs to be a concrete strategy, which starts with a political will to win. And it's always amazing to me how some leaders of various countries 
say that we're not sure that this can be won in 2023. This we're going for a long haul. I think that on the contrary, Ukraine will win in 2023 if there is a political will and then an ensuing concrete action on the part of NATO member countries to ensure that that political will is followed by concrete acts and then victory will be Ukraine's. Ukraine has already demonstrated an incredible strength, determination, and everything that it takes to win. All it needs is some additional support from the West in order to achieve this in 2023. I certainly hope that that's going to be what we will witness in 2023 and not uh, the, uh, uh, the what I gave as a description uh, uh, in, in 2022 of uh, basically wavering hesitations uh, and then ultimately uh, the supply of some, not, not all that is needed, but, but some uh, weapons to Ukraine in order to, for Ukraine to be able to hold its own.